everybody, this is Isaac from Gaming with Sidekicks here to give you a first look at the new Kickstarter game, Guardians of Wayward. Guardians of Wayward is a dice building game in which you will lead a guild filled with some powerful champions, items, and spells against some of the most terrifying threats that the world has ever seen. The game plays itself as the players react to each card played, hoping to keep the Wayward safe. This game is a game design for one to four players. Each player will begin with a guild that makes up their 10 basic dice and a guild squire that is your basic starter character. You will have a loadout of six characters and you will use those to fight threats that come out of the threat deck and ultimately try to stop the big bad from threatening your wayward. This game can be played fully cooperative or in a semi-cooperative mode. Fully cooperative will allow you to play together and if you defeat the big bad and meet the and or meet the event conditions, you will win. Semi-cooperative in the instance of the players successfully defeating the big bad or meeting the conditions of the event. All the glory earned is counted up and the player with the most glory, glory has earned their guild the right to be the head of the Wayward Council. So a first game is given through the instructions on how to set up. We're going to be looking at the first game setup and kind of play through a few turns and show you what you can expect to get in this new Kickstarter, Guardians of the Wayward. First off, when you set up your board, you are looking at a loadout of six different characters. These cards can include uh, characters, items, or magic spells. We have it set up here as one of the example loadouts to start with. The game does allow and encourages drafting of these loadouts in future games. So it gives you an opportunity to kind of pick what you may or may not like. And I think adding in that draft component to start the game is a great way to mix things up each turn. We're using this loadout example. Um, as you can see, we have Ellie Corona, Dana Scully, Abe Van Helsing, the Tracker Cloak, the Truth Seeker Bow, and the Healing Word. Each of these come with five dice that you have the opportunity to purchase throughout the game. We have created a setup for the actual game board, which we'll be looking at in just a minute. But let's take a closer look at this loadout and how your turns play out. On your turn, you have the opportunity to play the top card from the threat deck onto the main game board and spend the dice in your dice pool to acquire new champions from the loadout or to buy items or spells. This can be from the guild dice pool on the main board or from your loadout in front of you. You may also use dice rolled to fight threats that have entered in to the deep wood, working their way down to the wayward or take a shot at the main big bad as well. Once you have decided what you're going to use dice wise, you take all of your dice from your used pile and dice pool and move them into your discard area and draw and roll five new dice to end your turn, moving play on to the next player. So for example, we have these dice here, which I will set right in the middle here as you can see. So these are five of the 10 starter dice that you end up with. Uh, as you can see, there are different energy types on these dice. There's also a face for the starter squire. You can see he has a level zero with a one attack there. So here we can take a look at the Guild Squire, who is the starter character you start with. And you can see he has four different energy types that you're going to roll on one of the four sides. And he also has a level zero and level zero. There we go. He has a level zero with a one attack and a level one with a one attack with a burst that says when he's on that level one face, he also gains a plus one attack. So he's the potential of one or two attack on his faces. These four energy types are gonna be used to purchase different dice through the game. These energy types include attack, which is here. Spell, or I'm sorry, specials. 
defense, and magic. To be eligible to recruit anything from your loadout, you need to have at least one of those energy types to go towards the purchase cost. So for example, if we look at our board, Ellie has a two cost here, Ellie Corona. Two costs with the special, so at least one of those energy types needs to be that special to be able to draw her. If we draw her, she's going to that die is going to go over to our discard area, and then we'll have the potential to draw her for future turns. And Ellie, as you can see, one if we play her and draw her on a character face, uh, she is a level one with one attack, level two with one attack, and level three with two attack. However, her level two and level three gives a burst and double burst that says if you've used one special die this turn, rescue a villager. We'll talk about what that looks like as well. So she provides energy at her one, two, and three faces there, uh, single, and then doubles on the special as well. So as you're recruiting these characters, spells, and items from your loadout, and then using them into your discard area, they will recycle back to your bag and allow you to um, pull characters or special abilities and let those continue to help you as you work your way into defending the wayward. You can also see at the bottom you have six lives. Those lives there are important because you may end up losing them. You lose the game if you lose all six of your life. Uh, so it's very important to make sure that you keep those all and uh, that you're helping your teammates if you're playing with more than one player to keep all theirs as well. So like we said, on your turn, you would play the top card of the threat deck, and then you have the opportunity to spend those dice to buy some of these characters that you see, defeat the threat or the big bad, removing all used and unused dice back to the discard area, and then roll from there. So let's take a look at what the game board looks like here. I'm going to move the... So for the game board, we have up at the top left, we have a threat deck, and a deck of villagers. The villager deck has a few different characters in it. And uh, as you can see, we can see from the top villager here. This is the baker. When rescued, your guild regains one heart or you draw two cards. So these will enter in into the lower levels. You can see underneath the deep wood, dark marsh, and as that kind of progresses over to the wayward, these characters actually come in uh, face up. There's some different triggers based on cards, and they will actually come in like this. Face up on the far right, because they're deeper into the wayward, and as new ones come out, they'll push them in that direction. If you defeat the threat above the spot where the villager is, you get the special ability of that villager, removing them from the game. So. For example, at the city gate, we have the smitty right now. And the smitty says that when he is rescued, um, gain a guild die for free or regain a KO'd loadout die. So the guild dice you can see down here at the bottom, there's going to be a randomized guild die for each guild that you're using. So for my guild currently, the Builder's Guild, we have this second chance. Wayward regains a heart on its action side, or on its burst and double burst, Wayward regains two hearts instead. So you have the ability to utilize these dice, buying them from either your loadout or any of the dice in the guild dice pool. So on your turn, we're going to take the top card from the threat deck, and we're going to progress that down the deep wood. So let's take an example of what this would look like for your first turn. So we have that first card jumping into the deep wood, and that is the rotting corpse. We'll take a closer look at him. The rotting corpse. There we go. He has a one victory point in the top left corner on his right side. That is his toughness, and that is the amount you need to attack him to defeat this threat. Defeated, when you draw a new pool of dice, draw an additional die. So he will allow you to draw that sixth die your next turn in. So the Rotting Corpse comes in. And I've already taken and I have in my dice pool the following 
dice if we uh, kind of bring that camera right back over to here really quick. And we can see in my dice pool, we have three different types of energy and I also have two of my guild squire. So with those guild squires, we have a total attack of two. So I'm going to take that two damage and apply it to the corpse. But unfortunately, he takes three, so I'm not able to take him out this turn. But with my three energy, I can look and see if there's something else I could recruit instead. And with that combination of energy, I can come down here and buy my Truth Seeker bow. So I'm able to take one of those dice. And I'm going to take that Truth Seeker dice, and I'm going to put it in my discard area. These other dice are going to go up here into my used pile. So I'm able to take those and these unused dice. They all make their way right on over to my discard area. So if we come back to the board, on my turn, I was able to purchase another die that's going to help me moving forward. To end my turn, I will take five more dice out of my bag, and I'll give those a roll. And I have the potential to give them a reroll. So I'm looking, especially as a solo player here, at trying to come up with enough damage to defeat that rotting corpse. So then, at the start of my next turn, the top card of the threat deck is played, and we resolve it. And let's see what that looks like. So as a new threat moves into the board, it moves the closest thing, in this case the deep wood, to the right. Um, some characters or threats allow you to take up more than one spot. And right now, that deep wood has entered in a thrall. And the thrall says, your guild loses one heart and a villager appears when defeated. And he also has a three for his toughness. Now this time, my guild squire has rolled two level one faces and one level two face, giving me a total of four damage. So I'm going to take that four damage and I'm going to hit the Thrall. So that allows me to damage the Thrall. Now his defeated says my guild loses a heart, so I actually lose one of the hearts from the bottom of my guild, and a villager will appear. And that villager, again, like we said before, comes in to the city gate. So we take the top card from the villager deck. And we flip that right in there, and we have ourselves a merchant and here is our merchant boy. When rescued, the next die you buy this turn cost half. Round it up. And that's a great guy to be able to rescue. Because when I start looking at my five cost characters, especially my Abe Van Helsing, I'm happy to take him at a two cost discount when I can rescue that merchant. So somebody like Abe Van Helsing here, who's a five cost, all your squire dice gain second chance. And on the burst, rescue a villager for each squire with a burst in your pool. So that allows me to go in and rescue those extra dice. Now, some of these cards do have keyword additions. So for example, we said this one has second chance. And second chance says this turn means this die may be re-rolled from your dice pool. Uh, some effects may give other dice second chance. This cannot include the die itself. So we have some extra things that will allow for different play and some keywords that are well described in the directions. Uh, acquired into the game. Make sure you take a look at the rule set that is posted here in this Kickstarter to get an idea of what is um, what is on these different cards. With this Kickstarter, you are going to get a full set of the season, or I'm sorry, series one cards, each one with yeah, five dice with them and enough to run through a total set of six characters, items, or magic um, spells for four different characters, and so you get a total of 24 of those. You also have the Guild Squires and 10 dice for each player. Now I'm using the playmat here, as you can, if we kind of get out just a little bit bigger, and then the individual character playmat that we had here. Um, hoping to see those as potential Kickstarter goals, so definitely keep an eye out for that, for the long term of the duration of this Kickstarter. So this game continues to progress as the turns move on. You will draw that top card and work things down. Now let's say something like our rotting corpse has made it to the city gate and that all the way across is full of threats. If he makes it out of the city gate, he attacks the wayward. His 
There we go. If he manages to get to the wayward, that's kind of a bad thing. As you can see over here in our wayward, we have some hearts sitting there. The hearts in the wayward are, well, that's our life. That's what we're trying to protect is the wayward. So for a solo player here, I'm starting out with seven total hearts in that wayward. If a threat sieges the wayward and manages to escape, what happens is you remove hearts from the wayward equal to the glory value of this card. So if the rotting corpse comes out, we're going to take away one heart. If at any point the sieges have taken over and destroyed our wayward, we are in trouble and we have lost the game. So making sure those hearts stay high in the wayward is key to survival. As these different cards do come out of the threat deck, there's a few other things that you may end up seeing, and we'll flip over a few more and see what we see. So we may see an event card. An event card is going to trigger the particular event, and this is the recommended starter event. This is the overrun card. This event allows you to add seven event cards to the threat deck and you add an additional minion threat to the threat deck. The event says draw two additional threats. So as soon as that's flipped, we draw the next two threat cards and add them into the main row. We lose if the number of threats that siege wayward is three times the number of players. So right now as a solo player, if three or more of the threats manage to siege into the wayward, well, I'm in trouble and I would lose the game. So as these threats come down, the other thing you can have is the big bad. The big bad makes an appearance. And when the big bad makes an appearance, we need to go over and see who we have in the big bad spot. And for the first game, we have Stroke. And Stroke here leads the vampires. And Stroke has an appearance that says guilds must KO one of their loud out dice from their pool. If they cannot, they lose one heart. And so that happens every time we see the big bad appear, as we would right now. And Stroke also has Assault. If you remember, we talked about the additional rules that happen. The term Assault is only going to refer to the big bads, like Stroke here. Assault says a big bad with this keyword enters the path to Wayward when they appear from the threat deck. This keyword makes the big bad's appearances created like any threat or minion played. Big, bear, big bad does not count as a threat with this keyword when attacked, you just remove him. So he would come in, sliding everybody down and needing eight to defeat him because that is his toughness. So each time you defeat Stroke and take one of his toughness, he's starting out with five over there in that big bad spot five different heart counters, each one with five glory or victory points on them. Each time you take a shot at him, you're able to take one of those. And if you're playing this as semi-cooperative, you may be trying to collect those to get the overall best score. So that's what we're looking at for this new game, Guardians of Wayward, coming to you from Kickstarter here. So make sure you're taking a look at all of the Kickstarter goals, the levels, the things that we will be bringing to you throughout this campaign. Do make sure to get over to our website over at Gaming with Sidekicks to take a look at to take a look at the specifics on our written. Make sure you get over to our site at Gaming with Sidekicks to take a look at our written review of this game as well, which goes into a little more detail of gameplay and our overall impressions of this game. And make sure you take a look at our website for a contest during this Kickstarter for your chance to win a Kickstarter backing of this game. So again, this has been Isaac with Gaming with Sidekicks with your first look at Guardians of Wayward here on Kickstarter.